it's almost caught in the tree. Lord, have mercy upon me. Everybody needs somebody. And let stray cats go. Silky swing to the bar heartbeat. You're like a vision in this Miami heat. Everybody needs somebody.
Let's hear it by Mr. Um, Danny Newman on vocals and the guitar. Michael joining in there on the uh, backup vocals. And Max on the piano. Thank you very much. Live aus der Mülli Hunziker, liebe Leute, schön seid ihr dabei, herzlich willkommen. Äh, ich bin ganz sicher, dass ein paar Gitarrenfans heute Abend feuchte Hände werden bekommen, wenn sie sehen, wer neben mir sitzt und wer hier auf der Bühne ist. Es ist einer der ganz, ganz grossen Gitarristen von der Rockgeschichte, der mit dem Bob Dylan, mit dem John Mayall, mit den äh, Rolling Stones zusammen gespielt hat. Fünf Jahre mit den Rolling Stones und es gibt ganz viele Leute, die sagen, dann hat Rolling Stones richtig gut getönt. Sein Name ist Mick Taylor. Thanks for being here. Welcome to the it's show, Mick. Good, it's good to be here. Finally. Everybody knows that you're a famous guitar player, but the first instrument that you played wasn't a guitar, was it? Well, it's the first instrument that I learned to play properly. Yeah. The first instrument I played was the piano. Yeah? Yeah. So why did you leave the piano? Were you not a talented piano I player? Don't, I, I, the, fun, the, the interesting thing is that now, uh, I, in fact, for the last, uh, since the early uh, 1990s, I taught myself to play piano and I played piano a lot yeah. and I, a lot of the songs that I write and the compositions that I write I tend to write on the piano and then transpose them to the guitar okay. but I never developed that uh, skill as a as a as a youngster but uh, I started playing the guitar seriously when I was about um, not too seriously but um, <laughs> you were a young guy then. I, I started playing when I was about 10 years old it completely yeah. ruined my education and uh why well because instead of studying and working hard at school i got to, i got distracted by my love of music mm -hmm. if if i can put it that way when you there's, there's only two th three things that i really loved about school and that was uh the teacher 
no, the female I never, teacher? I never, <laughs> I never fell in love with a school teacher, no. Uh, so what did you I, like I think, about I think I probably have fallen in love with a school teacher, um, you know, in my life, but not certainly not at school. Mm -hmm. No, I was very good at football, and uh, okay. and I was uh, and I was extremely good at and gifted at, at music. Mm -hmm. in, in, so that's why I started playing the guitar. When you first um, held a guitar in your hands, mm. did you realize uh, that that was the thing that you were going to do for maybe the let's 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 uh, I say didn't dramatically the rest of your life? I didn't realize it immediately, no. But um, uh, when I f when I first started playing the guitar, I taught. I was I've, I'm self-taught, and I learned mostly by listening to um, uh, records, and I li listened to the Beatles songs and Tamala Motown stuff, and I learned all the chord structures by so, yourself. Yeah, so for quite a quite a long time. I mean, uh, relatively speaking, anyway, because we're talking about uh, between the age of ten and fourteen, mm -hmm. I learned how to play rhythm guitar first okay. and then then I gradually gravitated towards the blues because I was very curious about where where people like Elvis Presley and Jerry Lee Lewis, Lewis and other 1950s rock and roll mm -hmm. um, icons got their music from and th then I heard Chuck Berry and from Chuck, Chuck Berry I moved to the Chicago blues and um, by the time I was about 15, I was going to see John Mayall and okay. Eric Clapton and the Blues Breakers. Okay, we're going to speak about this in, in, in a minute. Yeah. Uh, people know about this part of your life, about John Mayall, about they the do? Stones. Yeah, I think they do, but how, how maybe they're not, they they're not... We're going to talk about that. Good, okay. Maybe they're not aware of what kind of life you, leave, uh, you lead now. <laughs> what is your life like now, these days? Um, it's, it's music. It, it still revolves around music almost exclusively. Um, I'm writing a book as well, but um, I'm, I'm sort of, I've started doing that in 1999, so I'm sort of at the tail end of uh, working, so on a, working, working on a book, yeah. and I'll be doing that also, also uh, on a laptop while I'm on, my, on the road, not just on this tour. But Is it your biography that you're about yeah, to Yeah, it's an autobiography, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're taking your time, if you say you started uh, writing 10 well, years ago? Well, I, I started doing it for my own pleasure, really. Mm -hmm. I, I've always liked to write. In fact, I, I, I found some notebooks of mine that go back to, um, not, not to John Mayall, but uh, I found some notebooks that um, go back to 1971. Mm -hmm. and they're, they're actually notes that I wrote about concerts that I played mm -hmm. with the... Rolling Stones mostly in, in Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. various parts of the world. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a, and a lot, lot of stuff about John Mayall that I've remembered. Okay. Uh, maybe one sentence about uh, the band that's playing with you tonight. Well, the, 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 uh, I have Mi Michael Bailey on bass guitar, who is uh, one of the original members of the Mick Taylor All-Stars Band. Max Middleton also, who is also an original member. Jeff Allen on the drums, who's been making that racket while we've been trying to get this <laughs> set up. And, um, and uh, De Denny Newman on guitar and vocals. And Mick Taylor. And myself. Yeah. Something here. I just don't 
Okay, this one's called Going South.
like to introduce to you uh, on the drums one of the hardest working men in uh, the music business. He's been working really hard since early this morning, setting up the equipment, setting up the drums, writing out the set list, organizing this, organizing that. And he still has the energy to play the drums, like amazing. Mr. Jeff Allen.
How old were you when you were asked to play with John Mayer? Uh, 17. I just turned 17. So you were a teenager? Yeah, well... You were very I, young. I was in my late teens, yeah. Well, I, you say that I was young. Uh, in, tho in those days, it was considered to be young, but, but these days there are guys that learn how to play guitar, um, as, you know, sometimes as soon as they can walk. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many... Um, young guys playing guitar today be primarily because it's it's uh, such a popular instrument and um, it's also a lot easier in some ways for people to uh, who are interested in taking up the guitar to uh, buy videos or buy yeah. DVDs Watched when I was when I, when I was growing oh, okay. up uh, there, were, there was no such thing as a CD and, and, they, and it was very hard to find um, blues music you uh -huh. had to go to a specialist shop uh, and uh, in, in London there were only one or two but you knew John Mayle before he asked you to join the band I didn't know him very well I played with him once uh, when Eric Clapton didn't show up for a, a concert yeah. near my hometown in Hertfordshire and um, I sat in for Eric Clapton because he didn't show up so I met him then, but it wasn't until about 18 months later the, that he called me up and asked me to join. And how did you react when you got the phone call? Oh, I was, I was ecstatic. I, I thought, this is a dream come true. Yeah. You know, and I, I, uh, I, I'd always had a feeling that I was going to make a, um, a career out of playing guitar. Mm -hmm. But... Um, but that was the first step. That, 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 that's what set me on the road mm -hmm. to... Um, um, making a career out yeah. of it, you know, and, and um, it was fantastic playing with him because I, I played every night of the week for three or four years all over the world. What did you learn from him? I learned a lot about, um, primarily, about blues music and how universal it is and how... Because I went to, when I went to America with John Mayall, I was only 17, so... That's a very impressionable age. So, when you, anything you experience when you're that young mm -hmm. has a very big impression on you. So, it's uh, I have a lot of fond memories of uh, my my time with John Mayall. Your family allowed you to go to the stage uh, to the states. Oh yeah. At the age of seventeen, no of problem, course. no discussions. No. Hi, no. Mama. I'm going to the states with John Mayall to play the guitar. No, no problem. No, 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 no. They, 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 they. Uh, They'd uh, realized by then that that was the only thing I was any good at, playing the guitar. <laughs> okay. So that took, uh, that, uh, that lasted how, how many years, John Mayo? <coughs> um, about three and a half to four years. Until the next very important phone call. Well, uh, there, was a, there, was, there was a little bit of, there was a few months of a month's gap uh, after I left John Mayo yeah. um, before he actually called me up and told me that the Rolling Stones were looking for somebody to... Uh, yeah to do a session, so I went, went along to play with them thinking that I was going to be playing at a session. Yes. Uh, and, it, and it was a recording session, and we pl I played Honky Tonk Women and uh, Live With Me, and um, the next day Mick called me up and said, come down again and play and join us. And I said, well, give me a couple of weeks to think about it, and I'll... Is that, is that so? Yeah, more or less. That's yeah. something that probably many uh, many people don't understand. How can how, how does he need weeks to, well, to we, consider well, if he want to be well, part of the Rolling well, Stones? Well, because um, well, yeah, but but you're but you but you're thinking of it from today's perspective. Back right. back then, I mean, um, there were a lot lots of opportunities. I, I I could have started my own band. I could have worked with other people as a producer. I think I got asked to join Jethro Tull. Um, free bad company, mm -hmm. but um, when I when I met the Stones, I, I liked them. I, my first impression of them was uh, was a posit positive one. Yeah, but I found a statement of yours of this time, and I, yeah. I, I was quite uh, surprised to to hear that. I just couldn't believe how bad they sounded. They they did sound it's, bad. It's, yeah, yeah, uh, the uh, sloppy. When you heard them in the studios. Well, when in you the studios it was different because they had a producer. Okay. And they had a very hands-on producer, somebody that could uh, guide them and get the right sound. 
Uh, of course, they could, they're quite capable of doing that now, and they, and they were capable of it by the time I left.
said um, that there are many reasons why you left the Stones, and, yeah. and none of them is true. No, no I so said that. Said they're all. No, <laughs> I didn't say none that. None of them is the I, whole I truth. I said they're all. They're okay. all. They're all true. I wrote them down. All of them. One is drugs. You mentioned that one. One that uh, I read about was the, the question that you were um, the problem that you weren't given the credits. Yeah, that's uh, another. Is, is that is that so? That's so true. Yeah, but that's true. But it, it's. Um, uh, looking back on it, I mean, um, I uh, I don't think I, the kind of person that I am now, I don't think I would get, I think I'd be a bit more philosophical about it. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you, you have to remember that I was very young then and very um, stubborn and very, I wasn't quite as shy as people thought, used to think I was. And so when something like, when I was told I would get credit for something, you said. I, I expected to get credit, but you um, didn't. You didn't. But I didn't. So you know that's. But that's, you that's weren't able to fight. Did you try to fight for your rights? I mean, well, I still do. They yeah. admit later on that you. Well, I mean, mo most people, most people are aware of the songs that I had yeah. a big influence on, and the, uh, of course, and most people are aware of that. Yeah. But you still don't get any uh, till this day any royalties out oh, of. Oh yeah, I, I get some. Of yeah. some. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't. I don't. Um, I don't earn the $250 billion a tour. But yeah, <laughs> it's not the only, but it's I not but I the don't only thing that counts, having no, millions no, but in I, life. But I, I mean, the strange thing is that if you would have asked any of the Rolling Stones at the time if they, if they could see themselves s s lasting as long as they have, they would have laughed. Mm -hmm. They would have said, we, we'll, we'll never last that long. Because... Uh, in those days, rock bands were, were only expected to last until they were 30 or 35 years old. But now, if you could, if you could choose, would you like to be a member of, of the Rolling Stones as we know them now? The An occasional member, yes. Yeah, An occasional member, especially in the studio. Yeah. yeah. But you're not, do you, are you still... Uh, do, do you keep in touch? Or well, I, keep, I keep in touch with yeah? Bill. In fact, I, I, uh, fort I'm fortunate enough to have... I had the opportunity to play on some of his albums, and um, I've even done a couple of shows with him. I did one last year in Amsterdam okay. at the Heineken Music Hall with Bill and the Rhythm Kings. Okay. Do you have any answers left? Answers? Yeah, because that these were my questions. Um, uh, no. You want to say maybe um, one statement about Altamont? A very oh. tragic experience. Yeah, it was awful. Do you remember? Uh, uh, yeah, of course I do. I, re I remember everything in graphic, vivid detail. Everything, everything. Yeah. It was a, a bad idea to do a show there. Yeah. It was a ba very bad idea because we, we'd finished uh, our 1969 tour, and um, we were actually in the recording studio doing Brown Sugar and. Um, couple of other t uh, wild horses in, mm -hmm. in Muscle Shoals, Alabama. And some people in San Francisco that were loosely associated with the Grateful Dead called up somebody in the Stones organization and said, why don't you come back and do a, a, a second show festival mm -hmm. in uh, San Francisco? So it was all hurriedly put together. And uh, it was to be a free concert. A free concert, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was too, a bit too free. I mean, yeah. you, see, you know, it was so chaotic. I mean, I, I, they never ever did anything like that again. Uh -huh. You know, it was it was it was the end of the of the peaceful sixties. You can say. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody says that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. I mean, there, there are In other way. there are there are other concerts that, mm -hmm. that have gone quite bad, but n none that are quite as famous as that one. Mm -hmm. And in uh, when you were on stage, did you realize what was happening? Oh yeah, with this young man, but you could, you couldn't see it. Oh yeah, well, you, you well we we you couldn't. I mean, I you couldn't see exactly what was happening, but I, I remember seeing a guy in a lime green suit, you know, running towards the stage, and mm -hmm. I saw him being dragged down to the ground. But I I don't think anybody realised what had happened until mm -hmm. um, when did till you the realize? next the next day? The next day. Yeah, and of course that 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 incident has been sort of a. Uh, Made famous and uh, immortalized by um, the, the the movie Give Me Shelter. Give Me Shelter. Right. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. Good. My pleasure. Good. The Mick Taylor on Cineband. Omega Circle Fury. Omega Series National Mall.
zu Live aus der Welle Hotzika.
Thank you very much on behalf of myself, Mr. Danny Newman over there on the uh, guitar and vocals, Michael Bailey on bass guitar and vocals, Jeff Allen, who's very vocal, and who I think has played the drums superbly tonight. Mr. Jeff Allen on the drums, and over here, um, the best dressed member of the band tonight, Mr. Max Middleton. Thank you very much. Good night.